Okay, so most of you were here for the first presentation of this, this track. Um, we're doing all kinds of uh, different uh, mobile field applications. As I said, it's nice weather, we have a field day and we're all locked up here and here. So, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give it to you for input. Um, you. There you go. Um, afternoon all. Mm, okay, I directly go to uh, the presentation. Input uh, touch-friendly mobile app. <coughs> Uh, uh, the overview is a bit of a slide on introduction and then um, why we uh, went through another application and then hopefully uh, yeah and then hopefully a demo uh, Lutra Consulting it's a software uh, development uh, company mainly in UK we do consultancy and migration to open source GIS uh, and training. Okay, uh, why input? Uh, when we looked at other applications for um, mobile um, and tablets in uh, open source, we figured out that there is still room for yet another application because uh, unlike um, a desktop, uh, mobile is a bit more uh, uh, wider audiences and uh, more usages and uh, limited uh, inputs in terms of adding uh, uh, mouse and keyboard to add data so uh, we can optimize the user interface uh, and have another application. So the main goal was to have a simplified interface so that it's usable on uh, smaller devices. And uh, by design, we limited the functionalities. So these are some screenshots. Uh, and uh, you can see there aren't many buttons, uh, buttons on the uh, app. And if you can operate Google Map, you should be able to operate this software as well. Um, then um, another big issue we had was uh, choosing the rendering uh, engine. We decided to go with uh, QGIS. And based on the great work of other QGIS community developers, we created a library QGIS Quick so that it allows you to create customized application. We created input on it, but uh, if you want to build your own application, you should be able to build that. Not exactly as simple as a uh, plugin, but in future, hopefully, it should be easier to uh, grab different components of QGIS Quick and build your own applications uh, customized way. And, uh, Rendering and forms are based on QGIS. So uh, that was the rendering and form side. The other uh, shortcoming we have seen in uh, most of uh, open source uh, GIS applications for mobile was uh, data synchronization. Uh, there wasn't a clear workflow for users to uh, collect data and uh, usually use it uh, in a collaborative way to um, uh, collect data in a team. It was always you had this offline, download data, go to field, have your USB cable ready when you come back and or use some uh, third party Dropbox or Google Drive or sub, some other uh, services to uh, update your data. Um, so what we came up, we uh, built a service around that called Merging Service. It's a uh, um, it allows you to do all those things I've mentioned. Uh, it's web-based service, so it synchronizes your data, your QGIS project, and uh, media. Uh, it versions your data, and uh, you can do collaborative editing with multiple people editing same data. Uh, and uh, it has got uh, authentication and authorization, so you can set it up for many users, share data, share projects with different uh, user permissions, and uh, then start working on project. Uh, we had also, uh, inspired by other uh, closed source um, uh, applications, created some features like templates. So as a data administrator, you can create a template, and your user can just check out that template, and they have got already all the data and ready to survey. So they don't need to spend time in QGIS to uh, set up the project. And also, you have got cloning project. If you like a project, if it's public, you can clone it, or if it's um, 
already shared with you, you can clone it as well. Uh, we tried to, we inspired by GitHub and GitLab workflow basically, both in terms of data versioning. So what we are trying to do is to um, create some kind of environment for geodata. Mm. And uh, uh, my presentation stopped, sorry. So this is a uh, uh, merging interface, uh, user logs in, you can see the projects, the data usage, you can create a project, uh, then uh, under project you can see different versions, for example, two file additions, one file edited, so you can um, even rollbacks uh, at some point to different versions. It's not still available on the interface, but uh, the database has got all the records of your versions. And uh, you can share your project with other Magin users with different permissions, read, write, uh, and uh, ownership. Um, and then uh, for creating data, as I said, uh, creating project, if somebody has got some project uh, templates, you can just uh, clone those projects and use those. Uh, and, uh, and for that also we came up with a plugin in QGIS so you can uh, connect to your uh, QGIS uh, uh, in QGIS browser, connect to Mergin and it will uh, uh, populate the same interface as your um, uh, merge in uh, web, it will appear in your browser, you have got my project shared with me and explore which are public, you log on to the service and you will be able to uh, create project, uh, upload projects, delete projects and synchronize projects. Um, and uh, typical workflow uh, we have um, uh, considered was uh, you have a data administrator he or she will set up the project, set up the forms, survey layers, create uh, map themes and upload the projects and uh, to merge in and shares it with different users and then uh, surveyors will be just worried about collecting data and press download, uh, uh, sorry, to download the data, collect data and press upload to upload it so they don't need to deal with the project setup and all the complicated uh, QGIS part of it. So, let's uh, look at a demo a project I have prepared for uh, Bucharest. Um, this uh, project is, um, um, as you can see in QGIS, I have got it here, Fast4G public. I have downloaded it. Uh, to download it, I need to first log in to Mergin. Uh, which you can uh, first need to install the project and then reg after registering you should be able to uh, uh, log in here, test connection and then if you have internet connection, hopefully, my internet connection is not good, but it will give you an okay, connection failed. Anyway, you will see the project here, and then uh, the things that I have set up here is the template. So I have um, uh, aerial photo, which is uh, XYZ tile. Uh, so whatever file formats you support in QGIS will be supported in input. It uses the guts of uh, QGIS. Uh, you don't need to be worried about your data formats. And uh, then you have got uh, some layers, OSM, uh, for background map, two survey layers, uh, point of interest and path. Uh, you can style the layer and set up a form for that. The way I have set up the form, I can show you briefly. For example, FID, I've hidden it. Name, it's a free text. Type is a drop-down menu. Uh, access to public is Boolean. Survey date is a calendar. Photo is an attachment, so you can take a photo with your phone when you collect data and next survey it's a slider and x and y for the coordinate which uh, supports the default value so you put dollar sign x and automatically when you collect a point it will pick the um, x for that point and also uh, uh, there are some uh, extra configuration under the display to show a preview google map like preview of the feature when you tap on it i'll show you shortly 
And then uh, the other setting is to, um, on the data sources, you need to make sure only your uh, layers that you want, you want to edit in input are uh, not readable. The rest of them, all the vectors, you need to make them read only. As I said, this workflow is mainly for data administrator. Once they have set up this for, uh, form and this project, they can upload it and others can clone it and create template out of it. Once the project is ready, you can um, synchronize it. I've already uploaded it, but by pressing synchronize, it synchronizes the data back to the server and uh, you will be able to see um, the server here that it's been updated. Uh, somewhere here, I haven't updated it, but 18 hours ago it was updated. And uh, you can see the person who has edited it as well on your history. So it was me and I didn't do any, oh, I edited one layer. So that uh, project is now ready to be used in input. Uh, if I move to input, um, you will uh, open input first from menu and uh, it shows you home folder, uh, my projects, it will be a bit slow, okay, and um, shared with me, explore. Explorer is the public one at the bottom and uh, my project is the one you have created and shared are people who have shared projects with you. So the projects you want to download, there is a download icon, you can press download and when it's downloaded you see this tick box, it means it's available for offline use. You go to offline use and uh, fast 4G public, so I go here and it shows where we are above Intercontinental Hotel and I want to capture a point of interest. So I've, if I press record, it will tell me what layers I want to... Oops. Sorry. So the point of interest, and uh, uh, I add a point, and the forms I've shown you in QGIS, so it's uh, Intercontinental Hotel, and the type, it's a hotel. Uh, it's access to public, probably not. If you pay for it, you'll access it. The data survey date is today, and uh, take a photo. You can take a photo, a bit of matrix. I'm not sure if I can, I'm allowed. Uh, or you can select it from ma uh, media from your gallery and then the next survey time, the slider I showed you and X and Y uh, are already populated and press save and automatically it applies the icon based on the QGI styling you have set and if you go back to project, my project, you will be able to see that there is an icon for Fast4G public and you can upload your changes back to the server. Don't know with internet connection and that photo it will go, but let's see. Okay, now it's been updated, and if we go to margin and refresh that page, there should be version 9. And one layer is edited, so you will see them. Others can synchronize the data back to here. I can go to QGIS and synchronize and pull the data back to QGIS. Um, in addition to... Um, uh, points, you can, so it supports obviously line and polygon and you can use the uh, follow me to stream the GPS to create vertices so, or you can just add uh, uh, free points so if I want to add path oh. so for example in path mode you have got two options add uh, uh, vertices or if you are driving or cycling or walking you can press and hold GPS and then from then onward it will trace you uh, your path and there are some settings here uh, specific to input you can set the uh, uh, 
interval where it creates vertices, the threshold, so it will show a traffic light what GPS accuracy you have. So if you are connected to some Bluetooth GPS uh, and you want to have low, um, very high accuracy, you can set that. So the GPS marker uh, on the map, it's orange, but it will turn green when you set that threshold. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much all the features. Uh, and uh, go back to uh, future plans. We have for um, uh, input, the first one is to officially release uh, iOS. We have got it on iOS and it works, so I can go and download the changes for the same project on my uh, iOS. Uh, so essentially for that, we have ported the whole QGIS to iOS to be able to build this app. And now, I'm not going to do it now, but no, that's fine. But uh, it's available on iOS, but uh, we are planning to release it uh, in market in the next uh, two, three weeks. And uh, also we have developed a library called GeoDiff uh, for um, handling the diff between uh, two um, uh, geo packages or uh, SQLite based uh, data. We plan to extend it for uh, post GIS as well, but essentially all the changes will be done in a smart way so you can have conflict resolutions and uh, uh, very lighter uh, upload, upload and download data synchronization. Uh, the GeoTIFF is already on GitHub if you want to have a look, and we have got some implementation on client and the server side. Um, a bit of work needs to be done to finish the work. And yeah, that's uh, our future plan. And any questions, suggestions, or. You're really fast. I yeah. was just going to give you the five minutes sign. No, I uh, was a bit panicking for the demo, so. <laughs> Panicking for the demo, but everything went well, so... <laughs> I yeah, it, it did, really. So, any questions? In the back first, if you pass the mic. Yeah, thank you. Uh, any plans to release uh, 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 all the three components, so the QGIS uh, plugin, uh, the backend, uh, and, the, and the app uh, on uh, open source license? Uh, input QGIS plugin, uh, the, the app and the plugin already available on GitHub open source. Uh, the service uh, we haven't, uh, we have, we are planned to have it similar to Git, so the um, uh, engine of it will be uh, released on their uh, open source, but the uh, uh, registration and user handling and having it uh, uh, running on a server, we will handle that part and I don't think we will release all of it as open source. So it will be similar to GitLab and GitLab CE or some community edition. So. About GeoDiff, uh, what is the, the how, how it is coded? What is the, the source code? Is Python? Is uh, it SQL based? I pass it to my colleague who can answer that. He wrote it. So. Hello, uh, it's C plus plus, and uh, basically, um, what it does, it's MIT license. It's on GitHub. You can check it. Uh, uh, it uses this uh, session session mode of SQLite. Uh, and um, uh, with the session API, if you know a bit, it's uh, trying to get these differences, uh, uh, differences, and then do some smart resolution of conflicts based on what you what you probably would do manually. And then uh, uh, the future plan is that it will also do some conflict files, so then you can manually check the conflict resolution in QG's desktop and find out if it's, if it's good for you, but that's not implemented yet. Um, yeah, and uh, we also would like to extend it to different formats in the future, but the geo, diff we start, uh, geo package, we started with geo package because we expect that, uh, well, we will encourage everyone to use that uh, primary for vector layers for survey. Sorry? 
Uh, we, as I said, we, we started with uh, Geo package because we expect, but uh, we'll continuously build on that. So hopefully, uh, all the common formats, probably. Yeah. Other questions? Thank you I see much. no hands. Yeah. Thank you.